I don't know if you guys knew, but Blackmagic Cinema Gamers are actually toys. I know it's shocking. I had no idea of myself until this commenter pointed it out for me. Thank you so much for doing that. I guess that makes red cameras like those toys rich kids got, like the Lexus ride-on car, but you pulled up in a little tyke's cozy coop at the playground. But you couldn't get into the big boy group because little tykes didn't charge enough for their toy to get you invited. I know that our significant others already think that the cameras we own are just expensive toys, and they're probably right. But when you see your camera again, be sure to remind it that Opening day isn't the only thing up in the air with Major League Baseball right now. The MLB is taking next steps to start using drones for more than just aerial footage during games. The league used a DJI Inspire 2 on a Zenmuse X7 gimbal camera to capture footage during a pair of college baseball games in Scottsdale, Arizona last weekend. This is the first time a drone was used in such close proximity to players and the action of the game. Chris, with a really fun last name, the MLB senior coordinator producer for live events is really excited for what this could mean for future coverage, saying that while the drones will be used for some beauty shots, the main reason we are out here is to use the drone to help in coverage of a baseball game. If there's a home run, that drone is leaving its perch and following the batter around the bases. It will be over the field during action. The league did use drones last year for the highly publicized Field of Dreams game, but it'll be interesting to see how they will incorporate the technology in more ways in the future to bring a bit more excitement and immersiveness to the game. I'm just interested to know how many drones are gonna get hit by a baseball. And the biggest story of the week, the Lumix GH6 was unveiled during a live stream on Monday night in a pretty underwhelming fashion. But let's talk specs first. The GH6 is the latest micro four thirds camera from Panasonic. It features a new sensor, upgraded image processor, improved in-body image stabilization, and more. The big thing here is the new 25.2 megapixel CMOS sensor that's capable of capturing 14 frames per second in AFS mode. It can also internally record 5.7K 30P video in Apple ProRes 422 HQ. This is a first for a Lumix camera. And it's also equipped with a new Venus engine with advanced image processing tech to render high resolution images with natural noise texture and rich color reproduction. So it's maintaining aspects here that are a hallmark of Lumix cameras. So in all decent features for the camera, but here's why I personally wasn't really intrigued at all by this announcement. This whole announcement felt very much like it was kind of pushed out or they were almost forced to make this camera. Even some of the comments and stuff from the people on the live stream trying to get past autofocus as fast as they could, even though they acknowledge everyone really wanted them to upgrade the autofocus, but nah, they didn't really upgrade the autofocus for this camera. About autofocus in the camera. So I think we do have to at least talk a little bit about the autofocus um, and then yeah. we're going to move so, on from that. We're not going to spend an hour talking about autofocus. Yeah, let's just get this out of the way. Um, so obviously now that everybody sees it uses the uh, contrast based autofocus system. It's DFD based. I am well aware it's not the direction that people were hoping that we would go. While it has great footage and I've seen some of the footage from it on YouTube, different YouTube videos and people that they've produced. My big question for it is what does it give you over other cameras in the market for that price point that it's giving you. Trying to do that hybrid style without autofocus with the MFT system or really good autofocus, as they stayed with DFD autofocus in this camera, I would say if you're looking to get into cameras, go somewhere else besides um, Lumix. Go check it out, think for yourself, but think about when buying this camera, some of the limitations you're buying into with it, even if it has that great video quality. It's just limited in my opinion. If you wanna know what people who already had their hands on it are thinking, there are plenty of reviews already here on YouTube and websites like DP Review. I won't make any final assumptions because I haven't used the camera yet, but I will be reviewing it in the next couple of months, so stay tuned. <laughs> And Sigma is updating on its full frame Fovian X3 technology. The development process for the three layer image sensor is underway in Japan. Sigma acquired Fovion back in 2008 with the goal of meeting the unique and wide range of functional and image quality needs of demanding photographers. For some background, Fovion made history as the world's 
first three-layer image capture technology when it was first developed and patented. The sensors detect all three primary colors in every pixel location, producing sharper images and better image quality. The technology faced significant delays last year in the manufacturing process, but it looks to be making progress again. It's worth repeating that this is a potential product and it is still very much in stage two, meaning there is no specific schedule available yet for the mass production of the sensor. We'll be keeping an eye on this to see if there's any updates on when we could see the full frame three layer image sensor camera in the future. And let's be honest, it wouldn't be an episode of Ungraded Camera News without sending a little love to our friends at Black Magic. Am I right, Grant Petty? Cinematographer John Barali, B. Raleigh, feels a little biased, selected the Ursa Mini Pro 12K because of the small form factor and high resolution. Due to the nature of the movie, Barali needed a camera that could be rigged in multiple ways to handle the different challenges the film posed, including a variety of environments and movements. He brought in four camera bodies and even rigged one to the back of the electric motorcycle using the SRH3 stabilized remote head. The other models were used for studio mode, B-roll, and backup. The crew also used a pocket cinema camera 6K Pro for other inserts. And beyond technical aspects like 12K footage, Barali knew the combination of the Ursa Mini Pro 12K and B-Raw would give him the exact image he needed for the film, saying it is unique the way the sensor works. With the Ursa Mini Pro 12K, we had a camera that could give that vibrancy, nuance, and subtlety justice because there are some beautiful autumnal colors in that forest. But for you curious technical nerds, he filmed using the Blackmagic RAW constant quality Q settings, recording most of the film at Q3. The Desperate Hour is directed by award-winning director Philip Noyce and starring Naomi Watts. Follows a mother in real time as a school shooting is happening at her son's school. How's that for a toy camera right there being in a whole film? It's got to say that's it for this week's ungraded camera news, but be sure to check out this video right here that I put together about my three years of experience with the pocket 4k, my absolute favorite camera. And it's a little bit different than the other uh, video reviews and stuff because it's a lot of experience. It's a lot of story. It was a lot of fun to put together and uh, just click on it and watch it. It's fun.